Okay, and we're back, and uh, it's drained, it's cool, and our bucket has just a little bit in it. It wasn't too much, maybe a quart or two. So let's take out, we've got, this is the lens, which appears to actually be aluminum. It's very light. Now, the ring around it is very obviously lead. And that takes us down inside, and that's as far as I can get that way. So we go on to the next thing that we can find. See, I've, I, I haven't taken one of these apart in a while, and I've only taken a couple of these apart in my life, but there's no ways in on the bottom. So we're going to go under these bands here, which are a very tiny straight blade screwdriver. And while on the break, and while this was draining, we came to the realization that when we're taking apart small things like this that are really oily, that are you know not really big enough to effectively do on the floor, things that we want to do on some kind of table for the videos and that, that would probably be a good idea to do them on a table we can really clean off easily for, for big oily messes. And we happen to have in stock an autopsy table for this. So we've decided that we're going to do these on an autopsy table and make a bit out of it because we're cool like that. So this is going to be called the Equipment Autopsy. So this is our first segment of Equipment Autopsy and this is the x-ray head. Um, while I'm getting into this side, I'm going to need the Allen wrenches because we've got to find one for that. So I'm going to need an Allen wrench about half the size of that one. I'm just giving you a heads up on that. Now we're down to the terminals, and the, there's the two big high voltage terminals that go in down in these sockets, but there's four low voltage terminals up here, and these would be for the motor assembly. And they're on there really tight. So I'm going to take these off. Okay, and there's the last one, the ground lug. Now what's kind of cool on this, I noticed this earlier, if you look at the other end of the low voltage connector here, they're uh, standard four pin Molex connectors like the hard drive in your computer uses. Now, I've got this, which is the, the power feed for the motor. And then I've got this little one down here. We'll get a close in shot of that. This dingus down here. Now it's just, it's two wires. Um, rather beefy, but it's medical grade, so you can't just say, okay, it's beefy, so it must be a high current thing. My initial guess, I could be totally off on this, this is just a uh, educated guess, is that this down here is most likely a temperature sensor of some sort. So we'll take that off. So yeah, it's, it's, pro it's, it's probably a temperature sensor. For those that really care, it is labeled a 1M Wood 90-02 00U-222-2.0 L one seven zero. So I have no idea what that is, but I'm just going to say it's temperature sensor. It's my theory. And now we have to do some digging and find the Allen wrenches that fit. All right, now we've found our magical Allen wrench that fits, and we'll tip this up. And I'm going to take the end cap off since I'm here. There's our pretty little end cap. And there's really nothing to see under it. It's just a flat plate. So I'm going to lift. I'm gonna separate. I'm going to lift and separate. I'm a wonder bra. Get that out of there. And now we're going to take a moment, go around, take out all these little Allen head bolts. All right, we got all the screws out. Mikey found an awesome Allen head that fit it for the screw shooter, which made life somewhat easier. And now we need to separate the rings, so, yep, that looks to be a part. 
Oh, that's heavy. It's it's sticking, Mike. Um, let's see if there's something beneath the cap here that's holding it. No. Ah, look at that. Now that is a big piece of lead. And there was stuff under here. Um, grab the little camera and you can get a shot down in here. And this has been worked on before. You can see that the screws are stripped out a little bit. So that tells, and, and yeah, somebody's been in here. So we'll take these out. Now, if you need to take out screws in a hurry, um, hold, I'm right-handed, so that's how I'll show this, but right hand for the screwdriver, left hand for the shaft, and you can twist the shaft a lot faster with your fingers, just like this. So that's how it's done. If you come down on uh, one of our computer recycling thrash and bash weekends, you'll learn how to do that pretty well. Okay, we've got that out. And get in here with a little lever action. There, we got that. Now I've got a, a rubber seal. Okay, we are now getting down into where the core resides. There's my big rubber seal, which is very oddly shaped. That's a funny looking seal. So. All right, we are now down into where the core lives. So at this point, I'm going to need eye protection. Um, so go dig that out while I start digging into here. And we've got, I have no idea what this is, but I think somebody hid their used chewing gum in there. That appears to be, no, oh, it's still not coming apart. Now see, as a rule, you don't want to force anything if you can find out what's holding it. It's, it's generally considered bad form to force things. So I'm, I'm trying to do this gently, especially since I can get some separation, but not as much as I'd like. So I'm just going to lever in. Ah, there we go. Okay. What? Hi. <laughs> okay, give, give, me, give me a second. Thank you. Things just magically appear under there. Okay, uh, I've got that off. I can see the head. Mike, I need you to hold this up so I can cut those. Oh, no, I can do it from here. Okay, I'm, I'm cool. I can get in there with that. And I'll, I'll show them the wires that I'm cutting in a second. Because if I do this right, you'll be able to see the wires in a second. Okay. Now, there's inside the head. You can see the, the really thick shielding and the seals and all that stuff. That's, that's inside the head. And there's the three wires that come up. These are all the high voltage wires. Um, now, the way this works, there's three wires that come down the high voltage cable. Now, they're all insulated from ground at like 150,000 volts. But they're insulated from each other at pretty, you know, not, not a whole lot of insulation. They pretty much touch. And the reason is... One of these wires, let's say, we, well, we've got a white, a red, and a black. So let's make things easy and say that the red and black are positive and negative to the filament. So these wires only have 3 volts between them. Now this wire is at 75,000 volts. So from here to here would be 0 volts. From here to here would see 3 volts. So they're all at right around 75,000 volts, but there's a 3 volt high current charge across there that comes off one of the filament windings. And we'll show you that in the, in the transformer when we get back into the transformer. We'll show you how that stuff works. So that's pretty much this whole end of the assembly. I'm going to take out these retainers here, which are very nice nylon bolts. Now the assembly here is the actual tube, and you want to be careful around that because it's not super dangerous, but it's, it, it, it can poke you. You, you want to be aware of what you're working with. 